Since the dawn of time, around the comforting warmth of campfire, we humans have been telling each other stories. Prometheus stole fire from Zeus to gifted humanity, Buddha escaped a life of luxury to seek enlightenment, and Luke Skywalker left his moisture farm to fight against the oppression of the empire. Terry Pratchett, the author of Discworld novels and science enthusiast, had written that the anthropologists got it wrong when they name our species Homo sapiens, wise man. In any case, it is an arrogant and big-headed thing to say, wisdom being one of our least evident features. In reality, we are a pan Narans, the storytelling chimpanzee. So, what if I tell you that all the story that has ever been told is the same story? Perhaps they don't have the same theme and genre, but they have the same narrative structure. Well, you better not believe it, because it is hogwash. I am sure that you have seen a lot of internet articles and videos making the bold claim that all stories are the same. They would usually cite the work of Joseph Campbell and say that all stories follows the same structure of the hero's journey. This is obviously not true, as Campbell himself never made such claim. In his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, Campbell identified recurring patterns found in various mythologies throughout the world. He organized them into three acts, departure, initiation, and return. He then further separated them into 17 stages. In departure, we have the call to adventure, refusal of the call, supernatural aid, crossing the threshold, and valley of the whale. In initiation, we have the road of trials, the meeting with the goddess, woman as temptress, atonement with the father, apotheosis, and the ultimate boon. In return, we have refusal of the return, the magic flight, rescue from without, the crossing of the return threshold, master of two worlds, and freedom to live. George Lucas, a reader of Campbell's work, went on to reverse engineer his finding and use the hero's journey as a template for his movie. Star Wars. He incorporated all 17 stages of the journey into it, when it may not even be necessary, since the myths and stories Campbell analyzed may not contain all 17 stages. For example, refusal of the return is not part of Jesus' hero's journey. He had never hesitated to return to the land of living and spread his gospel to his disciples. Buddha, on the other hand, did not receive help from without to bring him back to ordinary life after achieving nirvana. But he needed to be convinced to share the secrets of his enlightenment to the rest of humanity. Nevertheless, the success of Star Wars had turned the hero's journey into a formula for Hollywood success. It is repeatedly emulated to create blockbusters such as The Matrix, Lord of the Rings, and practically all Marvel superhero films. Thus, it is easy to believe claims that all stories are the same, since we are deluged by stories designed to have the same narrative structure. But if we were to look outside Tinseltown and back in history, we can find plenty of stories that doesn't follow the hero's journey mold. Romeo and Juliet, William Wallace, and Franz Kafka's The Metamorphosis are only some of them. Usually, these stories end with tragedy, with Romeo and Juliet committing suicide and William Wallace getting executed. In the case of Kafka's Metamorphosis, Gregor Samsa experienced a steady downward spiral that eventually led to his demise. This is a complete subversion of the hero's journey. I am sure that there are going to be some individuals online who will take this as a challenge and try to hammer these square peg stories into the hero's journey round hole. But these superficial comparisons ignores the essence of the hero's journey as a narrative of triumph. The heroes either return victorious or with a boon, at whatever expense. Like how Prometheus was chained to a rock and his liver was devoured every day by an eagle as punishment from Zeus. Either way, these heroes succeed at achieving something. The protagonists who never achieve their goals aren't commonly regarded as heroes. Yet, their tragic stories can be as affecting or even more so than your average hero's journey. But why is this so? Let's have a crack at this question, shall we? Let's look back at the hero's journey and ask, 
why is humanity so enamored by this narrative structure in the first place? This is just a hypothesis, but perhaps there is an evolutionary advantage in seeking out these narratives. The hero's journey in its essence are stories of success and survival against great odds. It would serve as great roadmap to success. Imagine being in a primitive society, the ones who showed the most interest in stories about winners or survivors who had successfully returned home from their perilous journey to deliver a boon to their society would probably be the ones who replicate their heroes' successes. These kind of stories are narrative catnips for young people, especially boys. In Japan, this has even become an industry as Shonen Jump steadily churns out new and ongoing hero's journey series every week, like Dragon Ball or One Piece. Hollywood is pretty much doing the same with superhero films, but not as laser focused as those shonen fairs. We not only passively consume, but also actively create hero's journeys. When playing a free roaming sandbox games, I often see players organically create their own adventures in the mold of the hero's journey. The same goes for new Dungeons and Dragons players. Their first few characters are usually destined for something greater. They wanted to go out there to the world of adventures and fully expect to be back again. But usually, a few character sheets later, I find that players tend to start experimenting with characters that buck the hero's journey mold. Yes, the hero's journey formula works because it exploits our primal instincts. After a while though, the same audience often get tired of the same narrative structure. The movie industry do experience audience churn, but they have the benefit of getting constantly replaced by the younger generation. Historically, the movie-going demographics have always skewed young, so that is why we see a lot of reboots and remakes of heroes' journeys. They are made to cater to the young audience who had never experienced the original. But how about the rest of us? What if we are sick of the hero's journey? Alright ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to present you all with a little trick using the hero's journey to create other kinds of compelling stories. The human mind loves pattern. We see faces on the moon, we expect a tale after a series of heads in coin flips, and many of us are seeking narratives through a hero's journey shaped lens. So you can easily create a compelling narrative by cutting out certain parts of the journey. This is a case where less can be more. Without the hero's return, the journey turns into tragedy. Tragedies are powerful narratives. It was also the most popular theatrical form in ancient Greece. And tragic heroes can even shape a nation's identity, such as William Wallace for Scotland and the Australian soldiers who died fighting in Gallipoli in the First World War. Now, why are tragedies so powerful? Tragedies leave an obvious gap in our narrative expectation. Being creatures of pattern and habit, when we see a hole in our narrative conception, we would obsess over it and try to complete it with a happy ending. King Lear, another one of Shakespeare's plays for example, had such displeasingly tragic ending, over a hundred years it was Nahum Tate's version with a good ending that was more popular among the general public. It had almost completely replaced Shakespeare's version until the 19th century. Tragic stories hook the audience by letting them imagine what the other ending could have been. What if Romeo had just waited a little longer? What if Friar Lawrence had told him about Juliet's schemes? There are so many questions you can obsess over. Personally, I think it is very important for game creators and dungeon masters to also be able to spin tragedies besides the usual hero's journey. Video games have the tendency of not allowing the players to fail. Sure, players who lose will receive the game over screen, but they can immediately continue and resume their hero's journey right where they had left off. I don't think that there has been many games that allow the player's failures to have narrative consequence and ends the story meaningfully without a scripted tragedy. This is an even more important issue for dungeon masters because total party kills are part and parcel of tabletop RPGs, especially combat heavy ones like Dungeons and Dragons. When TPK happens, it is usually thoroughly underwhelming because it is rarely planned and the DM is not accustomed to spinning a tragic narrative on the fly. I can tell you from my own experience that there are many things worse than the soul-crushing defeat. But the worst of all 
is a tepid loss. The hero's journey is a primal narrative archetype that humans are hardwired to seek out. Feeling that ancient hunger is easy, but if you want to create something different and awesome, there are many more ways to do it than just turning it into a tragedy. Keeping the journey as a narrative base, let's ask the question, what happens if you deliberately take away the other acts from the hero's journey? By removing the initiation, the hero departs and returns without facing the road of trials and achieving apotheosis. Practically, he returned home without earning his triumph. This kind of story may sound awful, but it does exist. Even if you have not read the Bible, you can recognize this hero as the prodigal son. He was the son who demanded his inheritance from his father and proceeded to squander it. When he returned home destitute, he was welcomed back by his father with open arms. A lot of feel-good stories have this structure. What if you write a story without the hero ever departing? It looks like this would throw a wrench into the whole returning bit, wouldn't it? But not really. The return has multiple stages. Without ever departing, stages such as refusal of the return and crossing the return threshold wouldn't make sense, of course. But the magical flight where the hero brings an elixir to humanity and the freedom to live free from fear and death are still applicable. Examples of these kind of heroes are Godzilla, or at least certain version of him, and Vampire Hunter D. They are the champions who have never left home because kicking ass is part of their ordinary life, and they bring elixirs to society in the form of a brutal beatdown. These characters are becoming increasingly rare because everything is getting overexplained by backstories and origin stories. But this is also proof why these stories can be very compelling. People want to close the narrative cycle by learning more about these heroes. What's interesting about them is that if we were to also take away the return act from these champions, they would become nothing more than animal, a beast. They constantly face trial and tribulation of a savage life in their natural habitat, but they provide no boon or bane to others. These kind of stories are like animal documentaries. It is harder to tell a compelling story when there are more missing pieces. But just to complete the pattern, let's have a look at other stories that are totally dedicated to one act of the hero's journey. A story that consists solely of departure is nothing more than a synopsis on the back of a DVD or a character bio for a game you're about to play. As for a story with only the return act, it takes a certain type of heroes to bring boon to us and have the freedom to live in the moment without the need for initiation. The heroes that fit this description are usually the primal impersonal gods in the mold of the god of the Old Testament or certain ancient Egyptian gods such as Thoth. They don't need to prove anything with initiation because they are already immensely powerful and there is no limit to their blessings. Alright, so there you go. Knowing how the hero's journey works doesn't mean that you have to replicate it. By judiciously breaking the rules and using some behavioral psychology, you can also create great stories. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. CJ, over and out.